Hello engineers, in this video, I will show you 10 Tailwind classes I learned really late in my Tailwind journey. Yes guys, 10 amazing Tailwind classes. So let's get started. Now here I have a basic component with a div, one button which has a spinner icon inside it. And uh, another one is like this down icon. Okay, so let's try to animate this guys. Let me show you how easy it is to start animation using Tailwind just one single class guys one single class so let me put animate spin and boom save and look at that guys <laughs> uh, this looks crazy i was not supposed to put it there so i will add it to my spinner so i will just say animate spin animate spin save and look at that looks so good right uh, and what you can do is you can add this on hover as well right so let's say hover animate spin so whenever you hover over the button it will start spinning okay this is because of uh, how we need to add group here so what you can do is add group here and just say group hover and boom now whenever you hover over the button spinner will start spinning but uh, tailwind is not just limited to spinning animation now here is the documentation there are like other animations as well uh, let's try animate bounce so here i will say animate bounce save and boom look at that this down icon is bouncing let me zoom in boom yep it is bouncing uh we can try ping as well now this is some i don't know where i would use this but probably when you are trying to fetch a user's location or something like that right or uh yeah i think so this looks like when uh, a network throwing signal or something right and let's try another one which one which is pulse so let's say animate pulse i will just clear this animate pulse save and this pulse right this is pulsating now let me show you next one which is number two this is uh here i have an I have input field where I have this like background color and all that stuff and text color is white uh, purple right now this blue outline looks really ugly so let's change that right that's the so for that we are going to add I don't know why it's not wrapping uh, save it okay now it, it's wrapping so first we will start off by removing so we will say when we are in focus we will uh, remove the outline so focus outline none now we don't uh, get that ugly blue outline next we will add our purple color uh, purple color blah, blah, blah. so this is going to be focus ring and focus this color is going to be ring <laughs> ring purple uh, 600 save it and look at that guys looks so good right next what we can do is we can actually change our caret so the thing which is like blinking here uh, prompting us to type let's change it to blue color right what we can say is focus and this is going to be caret let's make it teal right teal 400 and now look at that guys if i zoom in i can i zoom in yeah i can zoom in and look at that now this uh, next tailwind class is not that fascinating but it's good to know right here i have like this two icons and let's say so sometimes people use screen reader right to read your website or something but uh, they will get this like weird empty space here right so what you would generally do is let's say you add a span here and you just say wi-fi because it's a wi-fi symbol right and uh, wi-fi icon and after this let's say this is settings right settings and say now this looks pretty ugly right like if this is part of your ui i don't think uh, typing text makes sense so in this scenario what you would do is you would add class sr only now what this will do is when user is using reader they will read that this is wi-fi icon and you know you can be more specific here you can just say wi-fi icon icon and here we'll just say, we'll do the same thing which is sr only and this is settings right but your ui still stays the same 
whenever user uses a uh, reader or reader functionality on browser, they will read this. Now this fourth property is really cool and vertical, right? Uh, so here I have like two icons. Now let's say I want to add separator, right? Let's say I have multiple icons. Let me copy this and paste it here. Let's say I have four icons and I want to add separator here, right? What uh, generally people do is, right? Uh, you will create the div, maybe probably ending div, you will just say class uh, h1 probably, height one, save, and you know, uh, you will try to create a border, right? And every time you add new icons to this list, you will have to add border to it, right? Which does not make sense. There is an easy way, guys. Using Tailwind, what you can do is just say divide, divide X and save. Boom, guys. Now you have a divider, a horizontal divider, right? Amazing. Uh, you can also add width to it. You can say X2. Now this has like it's more thicker, right? Now, what would you do? Let's say if this is, if this is laid out in column, right? Column. You can divide Y as well, right? You can use divider for Y axis. Boom, right? Divide Y too. Awesome, right? I think you can also change divide color. So divide uh, is, let's say slate 500, save. Wow, okay, uh, let's make it yellow so that we can see it. So yellow and boom guys, look at that. So easy to add divider using divide, okay? I think this is one of my favorite Tailwind classes uh, since I started learning. Now this fifth CSS uh, Tailwind class comes handy when you are using forms, right? Like bunch of forms in your application. Now let's say you have a checkbox and you want to change color for this checkbox what you would think of doing is uh, you would say text uh, yellow and 400 save but nothing happens right because it's still blue next what you would try is doing bg right bg yellow 400 but nothing works in this scenario what you need is instead of bg or text what you need to use is accent right now when you save it you can see it become yellow right which looks super amazing. It's very much zoomed in, but uh, looks nice. Tick and bam. That's how you change accent color when using forms. Now, this sixth property is useful when you are working with gradients. Uh, now, you may have seen me do it or someone else do it when they are using gradient uh, in their projects. So basically they have like two colors, right? That's what I have. That's what I have right now, which is like blue 600 to cyan 400, right? Very simple, we all know this, but you can add third color to this. So what you can do is via, and let's say pink, oops. Uh, <laughs> so we are pink and this will be via pink 500, bam. Now we have three colors here, but let me show you a cool little trick. Now you can also add stops to this, right? So you can say from 10%, uh, enter, or you can say, let's say 50%, okay? Uh, you can see that, so 10%. Then you can also do this for VIA, which will be, let's say 40%, and you can say two, uh, let's say 60%, and save, and you can play around with this, right? But this VIA property, right? Like ability to add third color in between, it, it is game changer, guys, right? So let's change it to yellow, you can create amazing, wow, what happened? Ama amazing gradients when you can use another color. Okay, so I think we are on the seventh one. So here I have a bunch of icons. I have four icons inside uh, div. Now I want to add like space, right? Uh, that's what I would, what anyone would do because this looks uh, not so good, right? So what you would do is, right? Either you would do px2, uh, and and you will have to do this for all of this, right? You'll probably use double cursor and you'll say PX2, save, and this looks good, but it is a lot of work, right? Let's say you want to change it every time you need to use double cursor and all that stuff. I think it gets ugly. Or you might also do is MX2, right? It's not the same thing, but uh, does the job. But let me show you easier trick, right? 
what you can do is when using flex, right? I'm using flex here. Just say space X, uh, space X four, and bam, you have your space here, right? Uh, horizontal spacing. So now if you add more, uh, more div inside this, and it just works, right? I mean, normally you will never do this. Uh, you want to loop over an array, but uh, just proving my point, okay? Let's change this. Now, let's say this is flex column. So I'll save it and just say flex call. And now this is column. What you would do here is just say space y, uh, space y of uh, six and save boom, right? Super cool. So it's really easy to add space using this. So whenever you are using flex, flex box, make sure to use space instead of using like px or mx right when you need equal spacing so this one is i think it's the eighth one uh whenever let's say you add hover right here i'm hovering over this icons and it changes its background color and i want to make this clickable right so if you recall right like whenever you have a button or a link and you want to indicate that this link or button is clickable, you get that little hand icon, right? Now you can do that using Tailwind. Very easy, just one class. So here, uh, I'll come here and just say cursor, cursor pointer, save it. Now whenever I like hover over here, I mean, it changes to cursor pointer, like whenever you just come here, right? Cursor pointer. And you can add this on hover as well. So I'll just say hover. Yeah, that's what uh, we generally do, right? Like whenever you hover, you want to change it to cursor pointer, right? Now there are other cursors as well. So you can say cursor uh, weight, uh, which is pretty cool. Then you can have hover text. So hover cursor text. And let's say hover cursor zoom zoom out and save it and let's try so this is cursor pointer cursor weight uh this is for text right like when you are trying to select text or type text and this is for zoom in right now most of the time i end up using cursor pointer because with like text feel and all that stuff like it automatically happens probably you you want to use this weight cursor like whenever uh if you are trying to fetch some data from API or something like that, but most of the time you want to use cursor pointer, right? It's transitions, right? So what we can do is on hover, we can scale this, right? We can scale this by 150%. Now, whenever I hover, this increases its size, but this does not look smooth. So what you can add, add here, transition, transition, and also ease in, save, and now whenever I hover, it looks pretty smooth, but uh, if you notice, whenever I hover over this div, right, it is not zooming in, right, it's not scaling. How do you fix it? Because, like, this icon is just the icon, but we want it to scale whenever we hover over this whole div, right? This is pretty simple. Just add group to the parent div, and here, instead of saying hover, you would just say group hyphen hover. So now whenever you come here, it zooms in. If you like this video, drop a like and uh, comment whatever you like. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, uh, X and Instagram.